Do you see any like renewable uh, installations for HVAC, like where people are putting in like solar panels or something to run there? Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Profit Dig Construction Show. We're glad you're here with us. I've got Jeff Spencer here with me tonight. Hey, Jeff Givens. I'm Jeff Givens. We've got a special guest, Jonathan Booker, with hey, us today. Hey. We're very excited to have him. Uh, and as usual, uh, producer Jerry behind the camera and our buddy Chris Work has a son, son's birthday party yeah. today, so he's not with us. Celebrating. Yeah. So, Jonathan. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, I do heating and air conditioning, residential mostly. Um, for every aspect from rough end to start up, finish, a little bit of everything. So, just any so heating and air, that includes ventilation? Mm hmm. Okay. So, so, mechanical. Yeah, mechanical. Yeah. HVAC and mechanical. We'll mm -hmm. vent the. Water heaters, dryer vents, bath vents, yeah. anything included yeah. in residential or yeah. commercial for the, the other side of the country. Do you do the gas mechanical as well? Yes, sir. Lines? Yes, sir. Do you see any like renewable uh, installations for HVAC, like where people are putting in like solar panels or something to run their heating unit? We've seen that. I haven't been involved on the project yet, okay. but it, it's happening. It's coming more available around here. My uncle, uh, he built a house maybe 15 years ago, and he built it into the side of a hill, and he used a method where he had, like, concrete floors to mm -hmm. I don't know what he put in there. Like, I never actually got out there to visit. It's it, water, actually. Yeah, water so lines water. running through. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Is that it's something that you see a lot of people do? Several <clears throat> friends of ours, people you probably know, have okay. done that in their house is uh, one of the new barnuminium style houses. A friend of mine did okay. that in his in uh Heats the concrete floor, the unit doesn't run very much at all until it's really cold. So it's a pretty neat concept. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I was having a lot of trouble with my <clears throat> unit. <laughs> By the way, it's, it's still working really well <laughs> Good. Uh, now. But uh, yeah, I actually called Jonathan to say, man, I was going through a propane a lot tank of propane. a month. Yeah. I mean, a lot of propane. 300 400 $500 month month and a half i mean it was not sustainable so i finally bit the bullet and got went a, over to a heat pump went over to a heat pump and my we still have other things running off the propane but my consumption is way down so i don't know what was going on with that old unit but it's odd i tell you what, it was costing me an arm and a leg it was worth it yeah, to worth get a nice swap over to a little more efficient but you know one thing too you know that i've always had questions about is gas versus electric all right so we just built a house about four years ago and we done gas heat pump and got all gas appliances mm -hmm. uh the only thing we didn't do was like a, a gas dryer we just don't right. like a dryer but i also have a gas grill outside it's hooked into my natural gas but uh <clears throat> gas is relatively cheap even in the winter time you know it's you know, relatively cheap, it is. but you still have a fan blower that has to push your heat. Mm -hmm. So my <clears throat> electricity goes up about 35% in the winter. Gas goes up about double in the winter. And so when you do the math on it, really and truly, you know, it looks like to me electrical is still cheaper than gas, at least through the winter time. It can be in the winter and they make a dual fuel system. The heat pump with gas backup, so it hmm. you can set it if you're somebody like myself, a little thicker. Don't you set the swap heat. down to change over at 25 degrees, so it'll run that heat pump and 25 degrees it hits its temperature and swaps over to gas. So hmm. I always recommend that with propane okay. applications to save as propane is yeah. more expensive mm -hmm. than natural and electric right now. So yeah. pretty good system to put in, but. I've always preferred gas. I'm just old yeah. school, and that's what we grew up with. And well, then you're not relying upon the electrical grid, mm -hmm. that or are you? 
Can you run? Well, you still have, I guess to, have, you have to have a fan something. to blow it. Yeah, mm-hmm. fan to blow it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess there's ways around that with a generator. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, you can run a generator to a, I guess a gas powered mm-hmm. unit a lot mm-hmm. longer well, than if it was. You can. Well, see, we we put the fuel too. We put a generator. That's one thing that we went back and forth on with our budget. And oh sure. I wait till the very last. I mean, we was about ready to close our loan out, and I told Sarah, like, you know, we're under budget. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So Good I put in I put in a twenty five thousand watt generator, kilowatt generator, and that's the best decision I ever made. Yes, sir. Within seven seconds of the power going off, it activates, and I've got hooked up my natural gas, mm-hmm. so it runs off. It natural runs gas. everything. Yeah, it runs everything. Hmm. And so, I mean, I really like that. And I mean, you know, do you we, have to flush it regularly, like well, once a season or once no, a year? No, I mean, it's after so many run hours, you service it. And I've yet to actually hit, I think it's 250 hours as a first service. And I'm getting close, I'm within 40 hours of my first service. Mm-hmm. I guess what I'm saying though is, like, does the natural gas does it go stale over time, like mm-hmm. gasoline in your vehicle? No. See, not. if it sits there and is unused for yeah two it's, it's, years, it's not a liquid, not a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's okay. actual gas. And it'll, I think they run a self test, don't they? Something every once in a while, it'll run a test I, and start. Well, I actually set just mine up, oh, and I set mine up for once a month. Once a month, it, it will kill the power. On. It does it at two p.m. on a certain day. Because there's nobody home at the end of that time. So yeah. it kill, kill the power and it, it will run for five minutes and it shuts itself off. And I get an email saying, you know, the system been checked and everything is everything <laughs> is working. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So your, your generator is sending you emails. Huh? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yep. And that's, I can get on the app. You know, Does I, it ever call you names or anything like that? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but I treat it pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll rub on it every now and then. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Go out there with a little soap and water and wash it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah. We got lucky. We had a storm last, it was last March. The wind storm came through and, mm-hmm. of course, tree fell. Power was out in town. We were out for four days. And um, luckily, weather was nice. We got gas for everything the refrigerator <laughs> so luckily the neighbor behind us had a generac and he we pulled a cord over from his house just to plug the refrigerator in so we were good to go but it uh really made me think now usually we're off highway 70 we've got power within a few hours yeah but uh you're not in a super remote area. Yeah, we're in a pretty open yeah. area, but the way our power all comes in from the back, so there's six of us mm-hmm. that aren't tied to anybody. So we were kind of a, you know, they're not. We, they don't need to go fix six when there's thousands out. So I mean, that's fair. Luckily, we all streamed together and we made it work. Yeah, but did, uh, did you get you a generator? I got a generator. <laughs> <laughs> it takes well, one incident. Yeah, huh? no, <laughs> I didn't it, want to it, do that again. You know, it's kind of crazy. You mentioned Generac. You know, I looked at a Generac, and for what it was, you know, it was still expensive. So, I'm a member of Costco. When I got to look at Costco. Yes, Costco has one called Honeywell. Mm-hmm. So, it was $1,800 cheaper for the same generator to them. So, I bought it, and it shipped it right to the house, dropped it off at my garage door. Uh, actually, me and Tucker, me and my daughter, we took it around. I poured a slab for it. Yeah, set it. And we took it around, set it up, and I called my HVAC guy, and he come out and hooked it up for me. And uh, he actually set my output for me and everything. But when we pulled a cover on it, what was crazy it was a Honeywell. They had a Generac engine and a Generac generator. Yeah, same thing. Mm-hmm. It was like eighteen hundred dollars cheaper than yeah. buying it from Generac. Honeywell's not a bad name, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. been around a long time. Well, they so, sell Honeywell sells. Everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to buy it, Honeywell probably got it. They got one. <laughs> yeah. Now I wonder though, like when you're as someone who's not super HVAC uh, experience, uh, when I, you know, I obviously I hire your company to come out and service me and, and help me out. <laughs> but uh, what what are some maybe some things to look for in terms like if you're in the market? For a unit, like, does it pay to to buy a more expensive unit, or maybe you just even refer to somebody you know who's an expert? Yeah. Maybe this unit's just as good as the eight thousand dollar unit, right? You know, nowadays, you know, used to train was top notch mm-hmm. yeah. carrier ream. 
Uh, nowadays, most every good brand has a 10 year parts warranty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I still plan, you know, I still try to sell a, a quality unit. I, there's a few out there, you know, you can buy a cheap unit, but you can expect some little flaws and issues. Yeah. You kind uh, of gambling. You're kind of gambling. Okay. And, um, you can go super, super high efficiency and have more parts that might not be available mm. just in an everyday parts house. Not as maintainable. Not as maintainable. Okay. So uh, around here, Dixon Market, normal 14, we used to be 14 sear, now it's 13.4 sear two. Most people buy a base model unit. Uh, we, what, what, what does that mean, the SEER? Your seasonal energy efficiency rating. Okay. So just That's the, the standard now that we have to sell. And is we that, is that something identical, like just by practice we do that, or are there codes and regulations? Yeah, there's codes. You're not okay. allowed to sell anything below that now. Mm -hmm. So every okay. few years they change the levels and ratings. And uh, and is that is that Tennessee? Regulation it's national. Yeah, it's, it's a national regulation. It's kind of like national. your tier three and tier four engines, like in your in your uh, diesel engines. Okay, kind of the same mm -hmm. thing, you know, for environment, like EPA requirements, yeah, EPA stuff. requirements, and you. things mm -hmm. like that. So, it, it's changed a lot since I've started. You know, remember the nine and ten series units, and I uh, thought they were great. <laughs> and now, now, is that because they're just more efficient now? Just more efficient, or more it? coil space. They went from R twenty two to four ten A, and now. They're changing again now. We're starting to see some the 454B hmm. refrigerant units. So I haven't bought any yet. I haven't but dealt with any. I've heard that refrigerant is expensive. I've heard it both ways. I've heard it's not much more than 410A. Really? But um, I haven't bought a jug yet. Yeah. So I know the expensive part of, from my end of it is we have to have new recovery machines, mm -hmm. new vacuum mm -hmm. pumps, new gauges. Yeah, I think that's why it's so expensive because there's, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, people, we went to a class about a month ago on it. Um, Hebegger, <laughs> they, they put it on for us and uh, everybody was scared it was flammable. Mm -hmm. You had rumors it's propane based, it's this and that. It's not. Uh, there are more caution that you need cautionary procedures that you have to do, but uh, I don't I don't fear it. I don't think it's going to blow up going down the road in our yeah. trucks and the tanks. But now is it um, is it a liquid gas mix? Yes, like it's yeah, liquid tank. So it's uh, the charging techniques are different. It's going to be reverse threads because now we're working on. Three different, you know, I might go to your house, R22, 454, 410A. Mm -hmm. So you get a young tech fresh out of school. They're not paying attention to this tag. You start throwing the wrong refrigerant. So it's reverse threads. Yeah, so you can't screw it up. Mm -hmm. Reverse threads on That's these That's why propane used to be mm -hmm. years ago, yeah. So it's, uh, they, they went a long way with yeah. trying to be safe with it. There was a rumors that you couldn't lay it on its side. We found out that's false. Uh, hmm. So I don't know when it's really going to hit, but I know the Temp Star brand, they have them in stock here in Tennessee. So some contractors are just jumping on board and going ahead and putting them in. Yeah. I'm going to think I'm going to hold out. I'm going to stick with the 410 until we're, we're out and forced to buy them and yeah. uh, kind of go from there. But it's funny because the 410 refrigerant, the price dropped. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Dropped crazy last yeah. month. Never. Yeah, we've never bought a full skid of refrigerant. Won't you keep And back. we did. <laughs> so I said, buy it all. Yeah. You know, they used to always joke about R22. They'd fill, you know, fill up tires with it. And mm -hmm. now it's $1,500 a drum. So. No. <laughs> it's a, well, that's what we see like in the construction, construction industry is that material prices aren't really going down, but you found a rare, at least for mm -hmm. your field. To take that opportunity, yeah, while you get can. it while you can. Yeah. yeah, I remember I used to work uh, for the Air Force, and we worked on uh, old circuit boards, and it was amazing. There would be a part. I mean, probably when it was manufactured, a nickel, a dime, some tiny little piece of equipment that was made 25, 30 years ago, and some entrepreneur back then had enough forethought to buy. 20,000 of that. And they've got warehouses of these old parts. Mm -hmm. 
And the only place you can get that part is through that one guy who bought an overstock of yes, that sir. one part. And that five cent part now costs fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the government will pay it. Because you have it. the alternative is you have to completely re-engineer, redesign the electronics inside it, all because of that one part piece. Well, that, that, that's fine until you start seeing you got 10 pieces now. Well, you spent you know, several thousands of dollars on these, what theoretically could be less than a dollar if you'd have bought it originally. Yeah, so no. it's kind of interesting. Like, if you got something with a long shelf life, I mean, that, was, that used to be our joke. It's like, man, if we could have had the forethought to just invest. It's like junk, bond, junk stocks almost at that point. Like, if you go back in time, like, yeah, you just need a place to put all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to store it. And yeah. then you sell one, you pay for half your inventory, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, let's hold that thought, and uh, we'll pick back up here in a few minutes on another video. And uh, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in and, and keep liking and sharing and uh, uh, subscribe. subscribe to our, our channel. I was trying to think what we call it now. What do we call it now? Yeah, it, subscribe. No, no just to, like your own page. Is, right? it, is, it, <laughs> is it the Profit <laughs> Dig Show or? Profit Dig Construction Show. Oh, yeah, Profit Dig Construction Show, yeah. Yeah, well, we've changed the name a couple times. Yeah, but, I get confused you know, every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Thank but you anyway, for tuning in, thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you for being I here. I appreciate you really having me. Do you care to say which company you work for? If you yeah, want? I work with uh, Griffin Mechanical. All right. Okay. So, and I've used them for three years, two yeah. years now. Um, they haven't done me wrong. Hey, we'd be proud to take on any business we can get. Yeah, check, check them out in the middle of Tennessee area if you got some HVAC. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. See you next time.